A lot of bills today, especially some House members. Uh, good news is we were moving a lot of House bills off the Senate floor today, especially some heavy lifts, so thank you for your patience. Uh, this is our sixth meeting of the legislative session. Uh, we do have a, excuse me, do have a quorum, a duly constituted to do business today. Sasha, if you would, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Here. Senator Funky from Iron. Here. Senator Gardler. Here. Senator Harper Angel. Here. Senator Howell. Here. Senator Mills. Here. Senator Storm. Here. Senator Thomas. Senator Wilson. Senator Wheeler. Here. Chairman Wise. Present. We do have a quorum. Thank you all very much. I'm going to try to do my best John Kessler auctioneer fast voice today to get through this at an expeditious time. We're not going to go too fast, though. We do want to make sure we do everything properly by the book. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to a few bills that I see that are on here with some members that are present. House Bill 29, an act relating to motor vehicles. The sponsor is Representative Derek Lewis. Representative Lewis, if you'll just take a seat right there. That'll be great. Thank you, sir. If you would just introduce yourself for the record, please. Proceed. Thank you, Chairman. State Representative, Representative Derek Lewis, 90th District, uh, representing Clay, Leslie, and Laurel County. I do have a guest. Eric Hubbard, Executive Director of Back Rose of Appalachia. Thank you for having me. Sounds great. Representative Lewis, floor is yours. Chairman, members of the committee, you might remember Senate Bill 96 last year passed uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, this pur purpose of this legislation is to allow authorized racing events to be held in Kentucky um, on state roads should the Transportation Cabinet give permission. Uh, we have a motion on the bill. I'll shut up. I have a second also from Senator Storm. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Aye. Senator Funky Frommeyer. Aye. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Senator Mills, Aye. Senator Storm, Aye. Senator Thomas, Senator Wilson, Aye. Senator Wheeler, Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye. Motion does carry. Congratulations. Motion for consent. Could I, could I for motion consent? for consent. I have a motion, Senator Wheeler, second, Senator Storm. All those in favor of placing the bill on consent, please do so by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you both. Next bill on the agenda, House Bill 320, an act related to civil procedure. The rep sponsor is Representative Daniel Elliott. Representative, thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll let you introduce yourself for the record and your yeah. guests. Please proceed. Daniel Elliott, State Representative, 54th District, and I have a guest. Uh, John Hughes, Senior Manager of Public Affairs, Kentucky Chamber. Uh, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 320, an act relating to statutes of limitation, would amend our current law from five years to three years for employment-related claims for wage and hour violations and three years in cases of willful violations and amend to establish the statute of limitations of three years for violations of Chapter 344, um, which has been... Um, recognizes all employment related claims it would also we have a motion second. senator girdler we have a second from senator storm any questions seeing none sasha please call the roll senator boswell Aye. senator funky from Iron. yes senator girdler i'd like to explain my yes vote real please quick. proceed uh my granddaughter's number 12 on somerset and next time you come down make sure she don't foul out <laughs> right. senator harper angel Senator Howell, Aye. Senator Mills, Aye. Senator Storm, Aye. Senator Thomas, Aye. Senator Wheeler, Aye. Senator Wilson, Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye. Motion carries. Do we have a motion for consent? Motion by Senator Wheeler, second by Senator Storm. All those in favor of placing the bill on consent, please just by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next bill on the committee, House Bill 401, an act relating to workers' compensation. The bill sponsor is Representative Sarge Pollock. Representative Pollock, we do have a committee sub. Motion on the sub. We have a motion and a second on the sub. All those in favor of adopting, please do so by saying aye. aye. Any of those opposed? Motion carries. Representative thank, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee, uh, the, the committee sub is coming from my dear friend, Senator Philip Wheeler. Working with him has been a pleasure on this bill. House Bill 401, uh, Mr. Chairman, is uh, needed due to a recent ruling by the Kentucky Supreme Court. In late 2022, the court ruled that employers can only use Kentucky licensed physicians to submit medical reports and to testify the disability when litigating workers' compensation cases. 
Uh, the practical outcome of the change in 401 is to restore to employers the same physician choice that the injured workers have by allowing any licensed physician to review worker comp cases in the state or outside the state across the country. Basically, that's what the committee, uh, that's what the, the bill says and does. And uh, obviously, like I said, the two committee sub uh, points is it allows retired physicians who retired in good standing to be able to conduct desk reviews of workers' comp cases, and it fixes a quirk in the law, allowing a claimant to use actual wages earned from the employer in the determination of the claimant's uh, pre-injury average uh, uh, weekly wage. So um, if there's any questions, I would be happy to entertain. Questions any members? Well, if I can do a short explanation, it actually allows an employer, employee that was employed for less than one year to use his uh, any unemployment drawn during a quarter towards the calculation of their average weekly wage if, if they don't have a full year so that they don't lose out on uh, potential wages during that period of time. Thanks, Senator Wheeler. Yeah. Any other questions? We have a motion on the bill. We have motion, Senator Storm, a second by Senator Mills. Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Aye. Senator Funky Fromeyer. Aye. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Storm. Senator Thomas? Yes. Senator Wheeler? Aye. Senator Wilson? Aye. Chairman Wise? Aye. Unanimous decision. Motion for consent. Motion for consent. Motion, Senator Wheeler. Second, Senator Storm. All those in favor of placing House Bill 401 consent, please do so by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Pollock. Next bill on the agenda is House Bill 465, an act relating to worker benefits. And we do not have Representative Pratt here, but we've got a very good substitute in his place, Representative Rawlings. Representative, welcome. I think your microphone's there to turn that on. And if you would, just introduce yourself for the record. The floor is yours. State Representative Steve Rawlings from the 66th House District, and I have a guest. Liam Gallagher, Legislative Director for Americans for Prosperity, Kentucky. Wonderful. Please proceed. It's a very simple bill. It allows a hiring party to give benefits to a self-employed worker. It's totally voluntary and optional. And I think it can be a really great thing to offer health benefits to people without them being in the formal labor employment situation under the labor employment laws. And it'll help a lot of Kentuckians to have this into effect. Fantastic. Yep. I have a question first from Senator Thomas. We do have a motion. Um, thank you. And this is Representative Rawlings. Yes, sir. Can you give me some more detail? Because what, it, what, what this sounds like in essence, are we talking about someone who is not an employee, are they a volunteer? It's a typical example is Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, uh, Airbnb, that kind of situation. So it, it helps people, like I heard a story about a man that had a new baby, his wife had a baby, he helped with the baby and, and during the week so she could work and then he'd work on the weekends. So we've got more and more people working under that situation. It's called the gig economy. Um, gig workers are independent contractors that earn income on a per job or per project basis. And oftentimes they use multiple app uh, platforms to match with their clients, you know, di different delivery services, maybe with food, that's that kind of thing. Okay. Maybe I'm being too legalistic here because I'm a lawyer, but, but it sounds like to me that, that what the uh, independent contractor, the person that's hiring an independent contractor is doing is either doing one or two things, mm -hmm. either giving them additional compensation or they're giving them a gift. I don't, I don't see this how this can be translated in benefits unless someone who's a labor lawyer can help me with this. I think you're right about that. It is, it is additional, and sometimes it's used to supplement. Maybe the person has a full-time job, so it might be, might be supplementing. So it is at the discretion of the hiring party to do so. No further questions. Any further questions? We have a motion, Senator Frommeyer. Second. Second by Senator Girdler. See no questions. Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Senator Funky Frommeyer. Aye. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Storm. Aye. Senator Thomas. No. Senator Wheeler. Mr. Chairman, explain my eye vote. Please proceed. I'm going to ca cast an eye vote because I think that uh, giving the option of getting these benefits would be a good thing. My only concern is, is subsection 3 on uh, workers' employment classification. There's a current test that uh, is out there amongst the this is established by the Supreme Court that this might play into as far as a, a weighing of the elements as to whether somebody's an employee or an independent contractor in a workers compensation claim 
Uh, if the sponsor might be willing to have a an, an agreement or a conversation about a floor amendment, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Yes, we'll do. No problem. Senator Wilson. Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye. The vote does pass. We do not have motion for consent since there was some opposition to the bill. Thank you, Representative Thank Rawlings. You, we'll come Wise. back to you here shortly with another bill, but I'm going to move first or next to House Bill 533, Representative Amy Neighbors. Representative Neighbors, welcome. An act relating to economic development declaring an emergency. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. My name is Amy Neighbors and I represent the 21st House District. Before you today is House Bill 533. It's an economic development bill which simply allows the payment of working capital expenditures as an allowable use for the money received from the sale of conduit bonds. Kentucky already allows for capital, <clears throat> working capital loans for KEDFA's conduit financing. The federal tax code prevents up to 5% of tax exempt bond proceeds to be used for working capital purposes, but borrowers using this statute, such as the Kentucky Bond Development Corporation, cannot take advantage of that benefit currently. KRS Chapter 103 was originally adopted in the 1940s and does not reflect modern practice and standards in this respect. In my area, our local nursing home has been exploring buying out of the pension system. Because you must take your assumed liabilities all at once, it makes it nearly unaffordable. We have a motion on the bill, Senator Mills. We have a second from Senator Wilson. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Aye. Senator Funky Frommeyer. Aye. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Storm. Aye. Senator Thomas. First of all, I want to say it's good to see Representative Neighbors again. <laughs> Uh, and I probably vote aye on this bill. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Wilson. Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye. Unanimous vote. We have a motion for consent. Second. We have a second. Senator Wheeler. All those in favor of putting the bill on consent, please just by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next bill on our agenda is House Bill 444, an act relating to electricians. Representative Steve Bratcher. Representative Bratcher, welcome to the committee, sir. I think it's Maybe you. your first time appearing before this committee? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank if you, you would just identify yourself for the record, you may proceed. Representative Steve Bratcher, 25th District State Representative in the Elizabethtown area. Perfect. So what 444 does, it takes the Electrical Master License Electrician Bill, which presently to be a Master License Electrician in Kentucky, you have to have eight years. This converts years to hours. So a person that's working overtime, their, their hours would count for time. It also... Um, increases the amount of Matt, just one thing. Senator Thomas we do have a motion Senator Gardler though Senator Thomas your question please uh, actually I have a couple of questions representative Bratcher my first one is this um, as I understand this bill and I've only had a time to just to glance over it, yes sir but the, the way I read this bill and correct me if I'm wrong is that it, it does allow hours on the job to for in-class attendance. Am I right about that? You have always been able to have, in this career field, you, you've you always been able to have hours to substitute for in job. so you didn't need education. But what we did do in this bill was we're allowing a associate degree for in from a KCTS school or another recognized school to be used for yes, two years of experience in lieu of experience so the, a two-year degree would count for two years experience on the master level it would count for three years experience you would still have to have five years experience now I do just want to make note that we have associates of building contractors associates of general contractors the IBEW the KCTCS the Valor program National Guard Association and KCTCS all support this bill so I've done some homework on this did you have another question sir Yes, I do have another question, uh, in fact. My, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my understanding, again, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, these individuals are only only allowed under this bill to have to work only one year. And then after that, they can go ahead and, and do, other, do other work. There's no requirement at the end of the one-year period that they obtain their license. Am I correct about that? Not a court, not on this bill. That is not the case. You have to have, in order to get a license, you, there's two licenses. There's a lower level license, which is a le basic electrician license. You have to have four years of experience and pass the license, your test, the, the state exam. 
or you can have an associate degree and two years experience and that becomes your lower level license, basic electrician. To get the master level, you have to have eight years experience, which is equivalent to 16,000 hours. Basically, you could be an electrical engineer before you could be a master electrician, an attorney, a nurse practitioner, or a doctor before you'd be a master electrician. And you would still have to pass the test at the master level, as well as having five years experience plus an associate degree. It, we, we are one of the most restrictive electrical licensing states in this part of the United States, comparably to the others. Senator Thomas, any further questions? At this time. Okay. Senator Denise Harper Angel. Could you repeat, speaking quickly, <coughs> does the W support this bill? Um, yes, I think. They might be here today. I think it's on here, but yes, but they, they do support this bill. They actually worked with me on it. I have some shit. Oh, you do? Well. Oh, they're, they're neutral. So the, I, what, what union supported it? I can't tell you what union okay. supported it. I stand corrected. Then there was union. I worked with the unions to get this go, this bill going, and they, they, they supported it. They're, I guess they're not present today. But Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further questions? Seeing none, we have a motion, and we have a second. We do have someone that has spoke up in opposition to the bill, Mr. Irvin Klein. Mr. Klein? We're running on a very tight schedule here. If you would just briefly provide any opposition comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Irvin Klein. I represent the Center for You need a microphone that's right there. Yep. You just move to that next chair. That's perfectly fine, sir. And then just make sure you push the button and a green light will appear. My name is Irvin Klein. I represent the independent electrical contractors of the Bluegrass and also Southern Indiana. And we oppose this bill. Uh, Senator Thomas is exactly correct on one item. Uh, he said that it was his understanding that a person could only could work one year and never get a license, and that is absolutely correct. On uh, page uh, page four, line eight, under the provisional license, it strikes the non it strikes the requirement that a person be a resident of Kentucky in order to get a provisional license. A provisional license holder does not have to pass the test. And right now, they have to be a resident of Kentucky. This bill will eliminate that. And it will allow contractors to bring in people from out of state, work them for one year under a provisional license, send them home, and bring in another group of non-residents this will damage the ability of Kentucky residents to find employment this this Thank is you, mr klein we're going to have to cut you off sir i appreciate your testimony and your opposition this is not a change in the bill there, that has that is the only thing it changed was you don't have to be a resident of kentucky to get a license no other rec no other occupation requires residency for realtors doctors anybody else other than this bit this bill we took out the residential requirement for electrician in kentucky because of the blue oval and some of the other stuff that's going in the we we don't have enough electricians in the state because of our erroneous and over tasking of getting electricians with the hardest and set we take out it took out the residential requirement the rest is still in there and we did not change anything that's how it is now so that bill is not the only Rep thing that changed was resident. Representative Bradshaw, I'm going to stop you right there. We have a motion. We have a second on the bill. We have a second. second. We have a second. Senator Storm, thank you. Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Aye. Senator Funky from Aye. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Storm. Aye. Senator Thomas. Mr. Chair, I'd like to briefly explain my no vote. Please proceed, sir. I want to explain my no vote for this reason. I, I understand it's been a long day and everybody's tired, and really I've got to go to. I got to catch up. I got a plane to catch. But in spite of that, I don't want to rush. We're talking about electrical contractors here, and and, and pass something or approve something that I'm not I'm not fully 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 informed of. And I understand how important electrical work is to our homes, our businesses. And I don't want to rush and do something 
that may not be in the best interest of the people of Kentucky. Just like, just as I would not like an electrical contractor to come work for me, do a rush job on my home, and then one day I go home and my house is on fire, and, and I've got I've got tragedy to deal with um, and losses to deal with on that end. This is not something I think I want to rush through anyway. So I'm going to vote no. Thanks, Senator. myself a chance to read up on this and bring this before the Senate floor. Absolutely. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Wilson. Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye. Measure does pass. At this time, we're going to take a quick recess. We need the Senate floor to uh, adjourn and close the floor. At this time, we're going to take a very quick recess to allow the Senate president to close the floor of the Senate. We'll adjourn. We'll meet back in just one moment, please.
Thank you very much. Sorry about that. We needed to allow the, uh, the Senate floor to get uh, some bills filed and on their way of adjournment now. So let's go ahead and proceed with the meeting. Next bill on the agenda is Senate Bill 266. This is a piece of legislation related to uh, bots, and uh, Section 1 <coughs> defines the bots as an automated online account where all or subsequently all actions and posts are uh, of that account are not the immediate result of the action of a human person. Uh, it says it uh, shall be unlawful for any person to use a bot to communicate or interact with another person in Kentucky online with the intent to mislead the other person about its artificial in, uh, identity for the purpose and knowing for the purpose of knowingly deceiving a person about the content of the communication in order to uh, profit, basically. And then there is uh, remedies, the remedies uh, and powers and duties uh, provided here by the attorney general as a cause of action. We have a motion from Senator Howell, a second by Storm. Are there any questions? Seeing none, Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell, Aye. Senator Funky Frommeyer, Senator Gardler, Aye. Senator Harper Angel, Aye. Senator Howell, Aye. Senator Mills, Aye. Senator Storm, Aye. Senator Thomas, Aye. Senator Wheeler, Aye. Senator Wilson, Aye. Chairman Wise. Aye, unanimous. We have a. Mr. Chairman, I would I would say let's not do oh. this on consent and allow uh, Senator Smith uh, to explain it on the floor in I, case there's any more detailed questions. I appreciate that. Great idea. So the bill will move to the uh, to the floor, to the leadership. Next bill on the agenda I'm going with is House Bill 255, an act related to employment of minors. Sponsors represented Philip Pratt, but you can tell Philip Pratt, Representative Pratt's not here today, but in his uh, in his film uh, fulfillment is today of uh, Representative Richard Heath. Mr. Representative, welcome. If you'd introduce yourself for the record first, please. Mr. Chair, before we begin, I have a point of order on this. Please proceed. Okay, Mr. Chair, this bill was defeated yesterday, okay, and so I can't understand why it's being brought back unless under the rules one of the members who voted, who it says the prevailing party, so I guess if you bring it back, one of the members who voted uh, no on the bill moves for it to be brought back. I'm actually reading from Senate Rule 14. With, with that, we have, please, microphone, please. Thanks, Senator Wilson. Mr. Chairman, I was a member of the prevailing uh, vote on that party and uh, voted no, and I do move that we bring this bill back for a vote. We have a motion by Senator Wilson. Do I have a second from Senator Howe? Sasha, do we have to call the roll? Is that a voice vote? Voice vote. All those in favor of accepting the motion, please do so by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion does carry. All right. Representative Heath, you may proceed, sir. Thank you, uh, State Representative Richard Heath, House District 2 and just here to reintroduce House Bill 255 to the group. And there has been no changes made to the bill. Everything that we have presented before us today is exactly how it was presented to the committee yesterday. That's great. Mr. Chair, I, I made the same request to you yesterday on another bill. I'll make it again. I see the secretary, a cabinet secretary here, Secretary Link, Secretary from Labor. I would ask that he come forward. I have no problem with the that. Secretary Link, if you wish to make your way to the table, please, sir. Secretary Link, if you would, just please identify yourself for the record, please, and you may proceed. Good afternoon, Chairman. I know it's been a long day. Appreciate the time. I have a brief statement I'd like to present to the committee. Please. And then we'll be happy to address any questions that you might have. Um, I believe all of us want to increase Kentucky's workforce participation rate and help Kentuckians obtain the education, training, and employment services they need to find good paying, sustainable careers. We also want to help Kentucky employers find the quality skilled workers they need for their businesses to succeed and grow. Currently, 14 to 17 year olds are already working in Kentucky with Fair Labor Standards Act level protections that our cabinet enforces. Just last week, we testified before this committee in support of Senate Bill 128 with Senator Givens to pass legislation to help 12 and 13 year old Kentuckians obtain appropriate employment to, develop, to help develop the soft skills and work experience they need to get a head start on pursuing their career goals. Senate Bill 128 
also provides appropriate guidelines and protections to help ensure the safety and well-being of young Kentuckians as they enter the workforce and pursue pathways to professional success. Unfortunately, in our view, House Bill 255 takes us in the wrong direction. This bill will prohibit our Department of Workplace Standards and the Division of Wages and Hours from enforcing some existing laws and regulations for minors, those under 18 years old. The bill does not cover all the hazardous occupations for 14 and 15 year olds listed in the Federal Fair Labor Standards Act. While the, bill, while the bill appears to reference the titles of hazardous occupations prohibited, it does not, not cite the act and therefore doesn't include the entire section which outlines additional protections and exclusions. The bill does allow 16 and 17 year olds to now engage in some hazardous occupations prohibited by the FLSA and they are participating in a, if they are participating in an apprenticeship program or enrolled in student learning programs. The bill allows 14 to 15 year olds to work more than 40 hours per week if they meet certain qualifying factors. The bill eliminates some current Kentucky specific restrictions on employment for 14 to 17 year olds, including protecting minors from working at, during hours deemed hazardous to their health or safety pursuant to KRS 339.230. By removing Kentucky's protective regulations and authorities on child labor, this bill removes our ability to protect these young people from hazardous occupations and potentially dangerous situations. In our view, we should be focusing on, upon how to provide greater training and employment services to all Kentuckians, both minors and adults, while also protecting our workers to help them have long and successful careers. Respectfully, we believe House Bill, House Bill 255 doesn't address the Kentucky workforce particip participation rate, nor does it provide clarity for employers as it relates to state and federal labor protections. In fact, it may well create greater liabilities for employers who employ 14 to 17 year olds outside existing safety guidelines and regulations and potentially cut short promising careers for our young people. Instead, the cabinet would like to work with the General Assembly <laughs> and our other economic and workforce development partners to provide greater services and opportunities to all Kentucky workers rather than reducing services and the protections for our workers. Thank you again for allowing us, Mr. Chairman. We'd be happy to address any questions the members might have. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We do have a question first from Senator Funky Fromeyer. One of the um, points of clarity in the dangerous occupations, are those occupations covered in um, some of the the processes like OSHA that would be reviewing those environments for safety? Senator, if I may, and Mr. Chairman, if Please I may, proceed. we have with us, and I'd like to have our my colleagues introduce themselves, and Mr. Hammonds will be able to address that directly. Please identify yourself to the record, please. My name is Dwayne Hammonds. I am the director for the Division of Wages and Hours within Workplace Standards. As far as the question goes, an OSHA investigation would be separate from a wage and hour investigation. We can go in and look for the hazardous occupations if we have the ability and the authority to do that through the Fair Labor Standard Act. But they would be separate from an OSHA investigation. Please proceed. So I guess my question is um, with the various uh, lists of gainful occupations that were listed in section one. Is that the area that you were acknowledging is um, not meeting the standards that you're comfortable with? Good afternoon, Chairman, um, and members of the committee. I'm Jessica Williamson. I'm general counsel for the Education and Labor Cabinet. And just to clarify on, I believe, what you're asking, um, there is one section that addresses some hazardous occupations but it does not list all hazardous occupations as they are listed in the Fair Labor Standards Act. So that means that they, there are some missing. There is not coverage, it does not prohibit those <coughs> occupations that are prohibited by the Fair Labor Standards Act for minors. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Senator Wheeler. I think my question was just answered, but I wanted to make sure. Is the current bill as written in the committee substitute completely in line with federal law? No, it is not. Thank you. Senator Wilson. I wanted to ask you, there are exemptions provided in the law for certain occupations, such as agriculture, paper routes, and things like that for 
those that are underage, is that correct? There are exemptions listed in the Fair Labor Standard Act, but the bill does not include the hazardous occupations that are listed for 14 and 15 year olds within the Fair Labor Standard Act. So those aren't listed, which would not give us coverage for those. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Senator Wheeler, follow up? If I may ask, is there some specific occupations that are not listed that I guess are significant in your mind? Uh, yes, we have an extensive list. Give us, say, 10 good examples of things that need to be covered, in your opinion. Okay. The, uh, well, we can start with a 14-, 15-year-old that would not be included in the bill that are included in the Fair Labor Standard Act. That would be the duties in a work, we work room or workplace where goods are manufactured, um, operation of a motor vehicle, operation or riding in a motor vehicle, whether it's inside or outside of that motor vehicle, uh, work that requires the use of ladders, scaffolding, or their substitutes, loading and unloading goods from motor vehicles, railroad cars, and conveyors, youth peddling, which could lead to and has led to in the state of Kentucky human trafficking, transportation of persons by rail, highway, air, water, pipeline. These are included, these are established in 29 CFR 570. 33. They are not in the bill. The, uh, some of the stuff in the agriculture section for a 14 and 15 year old would be operating a tractor with a 20 PTO horsepower, operating or assisting to operate a corn picker, a grain combine, a forage harvester, a feed grinder, post hole digger, a powered post hole digger, a powered post driver, a trencher, handling or applying toxic agriculture uh, chemicals, transporting or applying uh, ammonia. Those are established in, the, in 29 CFR 570.71. Again, they are not in the bill. Does that mean it would be permitted then if we pass this? The, the state of uh, my division of wage and hours would not have jurisdiction to uh, enforce that. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Would any other agency have enforcement potential? Sorry to make you have to move that. No, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I'm flexible. Um, as we've talked about, the Fair Labor Standards Act does include those prohibitions, and so the federal enforcement would still stand. Um, it would be Kentucky would not have that in their pocket to, to enforce, so it would not be part of our law. So we could not enforce those protections that are currently in place to protect um, minors who are working. Welcome. Senator Funky from our last question. So I'm just trying to be clear then, if we're voting yes on this bill as it is written, then we're acknowledging that we accept that a, a 15, 16, 17 year old, or 14 to 17 year old, that would choose to work in those uh, hazardous situations are choosing to work in those hazardous situations and they're accepting that responsibility. So is that what our vote yes on this would be acknowledging? I'm not the bill sponsor, but if they wish to answer. Would you think that Representative Heath, is that um, what we are voting yes on if we were to vote yes? And I'm not the bill sponsor either. I, I, I sat through um, our, our uh, small business committee and heard Chairman Pratt present and, and answer questions. And, and I've read through this briefly uh, before coming in here. I was just sitting there thinking it's a good thing this wasn't a, a law when, when I was growing up or dad wouldn't have been able to put out a crop. Um, obviously, I support the bill and um, I, I don't necessarily agree with everything that the cabinet's saying, but but that's all I'll say. Seeing no further questions, do we have a motion? Now, Gerald, I know you have signed up. I, however, I don't think, it, 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 do you have anything else to offer that's not already been said? If you can do that real briefly for us, sir. Just identify yourself for the record and answer that question, please. Thank you. Gerald Adkins, Working Strategies 2, and, I, and it, I testified yesterday that I worked at the Wage and Hour Division, ran the Wage and Hour Division. So the answer to that question is that employer in Kentucky will still not be allowed to do those duties that are missing from Kentucky's law that you're all introducing today because the federal would still have coverage. 
it would confuse employers because they think they would be allowed to do it, but they would not. Kentucky could not go in and cite that employer because it's not included in this bill that permits them to do that. The federal still could. That employer still could not do that duty. Senator Wilson, question? Just a quick follow-up. Uh, so if I own a farm and it's my son and he's between 14 and 17, I allow him to drive a combine, which is a corn picker, uh, would that be uh, acceptable? He's not being paid. He's not an employee. He's my son. There are exceptions in agriculture. Obviously, we talked about it, but all hazardous occupations, whether it's family owned or whatever, would stand if investigated. See, no further questions. Do we have first a motion on the sub as it was presented today? Motion on the bill and the sub. There was a motion on the sub, Senator Mills. Is there a second? Second by Senator Howell. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Sub is adopted. Do we have a motion on the bill as it is presented here with the sub? We have a motion by Senator Mills. Do we have a second? Senator Howell. Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to vote uh, yes, but I'd like to explain my vote. Please, please proceed, sir. I was presenting a bill yesterday uh, when this meeting took place, and I did have a couple of questions, and, and, I, and I was not unable to uh, cast my vote. Uh, those, most of those questions have been answered. I do have a few new questions now. However, I think this bill should move forward. Thanks, sir. Senator Funky Fromeyer. I'd like to cast my vote and explain. Please proceed. Um, I'd like to vote aye, and um, I I've, I've respect this process greatly and recognize through encouragement um, from my fellow senators that we can do a floor amendment. And um, thank you for bringing those concerns to us. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Gardler. I'm going to vote aye to move it, but I have, I want the reservation to be able to vote no Please on yes. the floor. Thank you. Senator Harper Angel. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Storm. No. Senator Thomas. Mr. Chair, I'd like to simply explain my no vote. Please proceed. When it comes to allowing 14 and 17-year-olds 17, 17 to engage in labor that's dangerous, harmful, and threatens their life, and Kentucky has no oversight on that, we're taking away Kentucky's oversight, count me out on that. I vote no. Senator Wheeler. No. Senator Wilson. Chairman Wise. I guess an I vote, but in explanation of my vote, I agree with my colleagues. Uh, I do think that there's more to the process. I do appreciate those that testified today. Uh, I will get with Representative Pratt when he's back with us to tell him about this meeting today and see what happens with the bill as it goes forward. We're getting ready to go to the next bill on the agenda. Yes, we got one more bill on the agenda. Uh, motion does, uh, excuse me, the bill does pass. Next bill on the agenda, our last bill is Senate Bill 285, uh, an act related to economic development. I am the sponsor of this. On the sub. Motion by Senator Wheeler, second by Senator Howe. All those in favor of adopting the sub, please do so say an aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, on two, excuse me, what's before us with Senate Bill 285? Recently, uh, there's been an injunction made, uh, uh, federal court nationwide injunction as it relates to name, image, and likeness, also known as NIL, and that injunction has stopped the NCAA from forcing their rules on NIL, specifically in subsection two of the Kentucky statute that we passed alongside uh, Senator Morgan McGarvey a few years ago as me being the primary sponsor of that. The NCAA has now suspended its NIL investigations, and now our state law is more restrictive than the NCAA's law. We're dealing with the Wild West, folks, basically right now when it comes to the NCAA with NIL and transfer portal and everything else that's going on while we're watching the uh, NCAA conference tournaments take place. This bill before you today will allow our Kentucky state law to match the current national landscape on NIL so that our law will not be more restrictive than the NCAA's rules. Motion on the bill. And Kentucky will not be an unfair advantage compared to other states. We have a motion by Senator uh, Wheeler, second by Senator Wilson. Sasha, please call the roll. Senator Boswell. Senator Funky Fromeyer. Senator Gardler, Aye. Senator Harper Angel, Aye. Senator Howell, Aye. Senator Mills. Explain my vote, please. I'm voting yes because it may help us keep uh, Reed Shepard for the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Storm. Aye. Senator Thomas. 
I would explain my vote too. I can see Senator Wheeler is as big a UK sports fan as I am. So <laughs> I vote aye. Senator Wheeler? Aye. Senator Wilson? Aye. Chairman Wise? Aye. And I do hope it brings more Reed Shepherds. <laughs> yes, uh, we do have a motion for a title amendment. We have a second. Second by Senator Howell. Is favor accepting the title amendment? Do so by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion for consent. Motion by Senator Wilson. A second by Senator Girdler. All those in favor of placing the bill on consent, please do so by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Sure, before you adjourn, I, I was I, I, away from the committee when House Bill 29 was voted on. I wouldn't be seen as vo voting aye on House Bill 29. Thank you, Senator Thomas. Duly noted.